welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Mike. Hello. And John. Howdy. And so Mike wanted to talk about uh, the evolution of censorship. Is that right? That's what I was thinking. Trying really hard to make this one of those, so this is what you want to talk about sort of shows. But I don't know. I, I think it's something we can all we can all kind of like add add something in on is that methods of censorship and ways of avoiding it have. Sorry, I didn't mean to like throw you out on that. Oh no 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 no! It's, it's all good. It's it's all it's all good. It's all gravy. <laughs> it's kosher. It's been blessed by a rabbi. So um, you know. So you, all right. You can take this back to like the printing press or you can go farther than that too you know um, uh, something kind of like inter- like a little anecdote it's not necessarily about censorship but it, it does apply to a, a point that s- the government doing something with with literature that the author didn't want done um, uh, okay so there's the Iliad the Odyssey and then there's a third book written by Virgil there's apparently like six books. There's six, but the third one that people kind of like generally consider as being part of it, even though it's done by a different author. But uh, yeah, there's there's one of the guy, 16th century, wrote one where Odysseus goes out to the equator or something. I think. But yeah, so the third part is called the Aeneid, and it's by Virgil, and he was more or less kind of commissioned to write that book by Augustus, the the first. That's in- like. 1,200 years after yeah. the Odyssey. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was a propaganda piece is what the Aeneid was. And it was too that there was another hero that from the Trojan War that went back and ended up, you know, founding the city of Rome, essentially. And so, the, you know, he kind of commissioned him to make up this whole mythology to the point where um, Augustus had a, I think it was his... I think it was this, one of his sons was really well liked, and everybody thought that he was going to be his successor or something. But he died in Germany, like after a battle, he was wounded and he mm. died. And to the point where it was so blatant the propaganda, if you read it, that you know um, all of it is very vague about different stories about like heroes and other. I thought Rome was founded by Romulus and Remus. Well, I, yeah, it was still it was all to bring up propaganda because his. Um, because his cousin, or his cousin, his, his son was so well liked that when he died, he, um, part of that story was to make him like this big hero. And that there's a scene where Aeneid has gone to Elysium, or uh, Aeneid, uh, Aeneas has gone to Elysium, and he's looking through this pool of water that's supposed to tell the future. And, you know, they talk about different historical characters in Rome, no, no, this, this, and that. And that's all, like, you know, a paragraph or so. But when he talks about Germanicus, Augustus' son, it's like five pages of all these heroic deeds that he did. And, yeah, so it was, it, but, uh, but I guess to kind of shorten it a whole lot is the, uh... That virtual was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, we wrote, wrote some pretty interesting stuff. But that... Are you saying he was a propagandist? Yeah. Yeah, at least at least in part. So he wrote that, and it. He's in his will. He said, "I don't want it published. It wasn't finished yet." But Augustus published it anyways because mm. he wanted the propaganda. So, it, so you're you, so was going back that far, and then there's and then you can almost let's just fuck it. Let's get the whole couple centuries and go up to like the printing press, and then when they started having those around. If you were if you were publishing anything that that whatever government may not like, the printing press was in the basement. But well, prior get, to that, everything you, know, you had you had to write by you know write things by hand. Yeah. And how easy is it, is it to stop somebody writing something by hand? Yeah. Or talking, you would say stuff out of line, and we throw you in jail. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So but yeah, like you're saying, the printing press allowed for them to print off their material. Uh, and some, and sometimes even anonymously, mm-hmm. and send out you know thousands of copies. Yeah. Even after you're dead. Yeah, and that, there's a there's a lot of power in that because that stopped the censors in a way. 
Right. You know, really slowed him down a bit. It meant that if they had to resort to, you know, burning books and things like that mm-hmm. in order to stop the scent getting out and yeah. spreading. So they better burn the internet. <laughs> <laughs> burn the internet. Exactly. <laughs> Which, I, I, I guess we're kind of there a, a lot quicker than I was thinking, but, um, yeah, uh, I mean, think about Google. Isn't Google getting kind of weird? How if, like, you put anything that's, like, not having to do with buying something or, like, something having to do with entertainment of the, or any, or anything of the like, it seemed to go, like, really shitty search results every time? Is that just me? Or, you know, YouTube just shutting down your site because you talk negatively about the war. Yeah, you know, that happened to um, Storm Clouds Gathering, Luke Rudowski, Antiwar.com got their uh, Google Ad Choices thing revoked. So it's like, Google's doing the censorship for the government. The government's not even doing it, so they're not violating the First Amendment, not that they really care too much about that in the first place, but they, I mean, Google's doing it for them, effectively. Mm -hmm. Or Alphabet at this point, is that what what they're called? At least that's the shell company that owns Google now that Google created. So Alphabet, Alphabet, yeah. mm-hmm. and they own, all, and that company owns a whole bunch of stuff. They own Boston Dynamics, which is making like the weird oh, dog right. drone thing. Oh yeah, it's it's whoo, whoo. <laughs> Google became you know start started with you know being you know do no harm or do no evil was their slogan to well, whatever, we're, we're getting a big check now, so we don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of what it seems like it came up to be, right? But then at the same time, we've got the internet now, mm-hmm. where you can't, you can't stop the message. Yeah, and, and because... And governments are trying, like China. Oh, yeah. And they're still getting through the firewalls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in China, can you just use a Tor browser and you can do it? Like, it's not even, like, that hard from what I understand. But it is kind of interesting to look up, like, you know, something on Google, what is it, .cn is China. And yeah, you can see, like, with the sort of search results to come up, and you can put in, like, Tiananmen Square, it's like nothing. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like a couple of articles of, uh, like, huh, yeah, that was a weird sort of time in history, wasn't it, kids? <laughs> you know, they don't really, you know, you're not getting a whole lot, you know, whereas, uh, you know, you put that in there here, you get, like, everything from videos to different articles on it, people's perspective of it, alternative art of, you know, different colors of the guy being, stopping the tanks, and all that. Um, so, you kind of, like, you got Google doing that with just like search results, but then, you know, kind of mentioned with antiwar.com and the uh, 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 they got what it was. It was it was ad choices, I think, that canceled their contract because it violated their terms and whatever. Right. So they can't. They weren't making uh, money off of the website ads anymore. So that's kind of weird too. And you go, well, okay, well. So they just go with another company for your ads. There's only really three companies that do that. That's it, mm. essentially. I mean, you could you could privately you know talk to a, you know an advertiser and say, hey, you want to you know put an ad on a website, and they might be like, sure, yeah. But to make that sort of revenue stream that you can get from the from those companies putting the ads on your website is, is you know it's much less than what they could offer. So you really kind of get you know hamstrung like that. Mm. And, um, Things that make you go. Hmm. Mm. And um, but mesh, mesh networks is kind of an alternative to that to that sort of central, centralization that seems to be kind of taking hold of the internet. I love mesh networks a little bit. Okay, so <sighs> mesh networks this is kind of complicated. Like I don't really know a lot about it, but I know enough about it to be like, oh, that's really cool. So like a, like a mesh network instead of going to like from what I understand, instead of going to like a centralized like server or ISP thing, you're pinging off uh-huh. of like different other computers around you, different other like modems, IPs, and ding, 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 and it's all connecting information like that. Kind of like uh, like uh, uh, 
using a you know downloading a video torrent or something like that. It's like, like bit that. Torrent. a bit torrent, yeah, video torrent only. <laughs> bit torrent, yeah, because it doesn't necessarily need to be a video, except that's what everybody uses it for. <laughs> Superman came out. How much does it cost to go to the movie? Twelve bucks? No, it's free. <laughs> Uh, what was oh the one the one thing I, w- I was thinking about mentioning was uh, uh, what I found that was really interesting was uh, you mentioned uh, you gotta be careful because it might be porn. Oh yeah oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Strangely enough, with people if you if you sleep with other with other people who are dirty, you get a virus. Apparently, that works with computers too. If you go to a dirty <laughs> website, the computer also gets a virus. It's really wild how close they are coming to being people. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Don't go to dirty websites and you won't get a virus. I mean, and I, I, I've heard people say that. They're like, people with like, you know, clean up people's hard drives for viruses and stuff. Like, they don't even really have to know where it came from. They just know that, oh yeah, somebody was looking on porn on a dirty website. They didn't go to Pornhub or something reputable. They went to like some weird <laughs> <laughs> reputable porn site. Yes, I said it. <laughs> you know, so they, they went they went to like, you know, like a weird like dirty website and that's that's where you get the viruses. And all those guys who do that, they all know that's exactly where you got your virus. They can't tell you that. You know? They especially can't tell you that if you like bring the computer in with like yeah. histories. Curiously deleted. Yeah. <laughs> Fairly recently. Yeah. So, uh, there's that. But what was I going to bring up? Oh, yeah. John, you were, you were, your pseudonym last week was uh, Diderot. And uh, that, was, that was a little interesting example of, of getting around uh, censorship. It, oh, it, right. It, it is an alias, you know, by the way. Right. Just, you know, simply, you know, who am I? Well, I am... Today I'm, you know, Batman, you know, whatever. But, uh, so the, so Diderot's encyclopedia, or if I can say it in French, encyclopédie, that's wrong, but, uh, something like that. Anyway. Uh, it might be. Uh, or I, I think I pronounced part of it right, but the other part wrong. I can remember it sometimes. So... The table of contents was even written in such a way to kind of like, kind of spook away, that not spook away, but make the censors reading the book think that it was okay and nothing was too controversial about it. Like, all the controversial stuff was either down at the bottom of the uh, uh, table of contents to where, like, you know, even the guy would just skim it and maybe not see it, or some of the other stuff wasn't even in the table of contents. It was just in the book somewhere, you know. And uh, and the other ways that they kind of get around to kind of like poking poking the bear or, or irritating the man a little bit is that if you'd be looking at an article in the encyclopedia and it said like it would be something like this it'd be like uh, dumb science idea see page sixty eight you turn to page sixty eight and it talks about like the part of the Bible about mana from heaven or something you know it was just really kind of insipid of like oh see other dumb ideas oh. The Pope? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of they were, they were really ch- it was he was really tricky about it, but it, it did it did work. Uh, and then also like nursery rhymes. Right, right. Nursery rhymes were written in a in a kind of code, but a lot of them were about how the king is a retard or something. <laughs> king ain't so smart. <laughs> like which one? Do you know? Do you remember? Or? Um, let me think. I think the Little Jack Horner. Okay. I think I don't remember who he's supposed to be, but fair enough. Um, what was Celebrate Travels? Yeah, yeah. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, uh, but Voltaire went to England, and there is uh, like a collection. Of it. It's called Voltaire's Letters from England. And when he went there, he was really surprised. Like, oh, everybody just kind of speaks their mind. This is kind of wild. You know, we can't do this in France. And so those letters coming back from from England in a weird way were kind of like part of you know the the awakening process for the the, the, the French people at the time to you know what was 
going on with you know, the concepts of you know of rights and, and whatnot that they were like, oh gee, why is it that they can do that in England? That's odd. You know, why can't we do that here? And I've heard that be compared as like if that's up there with you know uh, other things that he wrote and uh, uh, Diderot and Condorcet and all those different uh, Enlightenment writers in um, France and then Thomas Paine, of course, contributed to the French Revolution with Rights of Man and all that. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, which by the way was first published as an Englishman. Uh, Thomas Paine didn't put his name on it the first time around. I don't know if it was out of fear of censors or, or judgment of his character or something like yeah. that. But yeah, it's uh, there are sometimes some really simple ways to get around the bastards that are trying to shut you up. Yeah. When when uh, Darwin wrote Origin of the Species, he specifically left out stuff about human evolution. Hmm. Interesting. So there's just be something that'd be like implied, sort of. Right. That okay. Well, all these other animals do this, but you know. He also close it out with a reference to God, which he's made out to be a godless heathen, you know, materialist heathen, heathen. But uh, didn't he go to church every Sunday? Though? That's the thing that's funny about that. Is it his that, mom? That, I guess is real religious. Okay, so he went out of like respect for her or something. But it's or? also like. Uh, it was originally the Wallace, <coughs> the Darwin and Wallace theory of evolution, but Wallace is written out of history because Wallace went into uh, a more of a spiritual realm, not, not orthodoxy of any sort, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, deeper into mental aspects. Okay. And... Uh, that fell out of favor with the scientific community, so he's been written out as a co-founder. What it was is mm. Darwin was informed by one of his contemporaries that hey, Wallace is working on something like this, you want to talk to him. And Wallace accepted that they both were developing a, a similar theory concurrently, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to each other. So he accepted Darwin as a peer and, and agreed to hold his presentation so Darwin could get his stuff together and then they co-presented this theory mm. and so it was well known to be the Darwin-Wallace theory mm. and as it is told to us today mm. Wallace has forgotten basically right. basically written out of the history yeah, books yeah because he didn't he, didn't, he wasn't pure science in the way that they wanted science to be more or less mm. Yeah, and that's uh, something too. I mean, I, I think before maybe we were alluding to like uh, uh, political censorship and philosophical stuff, but there's plenty of censorship when it comes to stuff having to do with science too, or absolutely, or just yeah. things that are just kind of not even censored, more just not even published or considered. Like, okay, well, this guy said something. He does still have to be a doctor, but it really goes against everything that we've already put in the textbooks and. Well, that would be really hard to reprint those. So let's just, <laughs> yeah. just forget you said anything. Like that, 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 it seems like you know the motivation for 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 a lot of like uh, you know established science to actually really consider the fact that maybe everything that they not everything but you know certain major points that they've been saying are are facts. What if they're not? Right. Uh, it's I, it's it's really lazy on a really sad level to not. At least, well, I think make a mention. Yeah. Science, like science revolutions in science generally come about not because of one good idea. Mm -hmm. It's usually failures of an existing model, incremental right. failures okay. stacking up, and that basically fueling a new paradigm. Right. But even then, you still have to wait for the elders, the the gatekeepers, essentially, to die off mm -hmm. before the new information is taken up and. and and acted upon in a way to propel a new revolution, so to speak. And, you know, I think a lot of people will sometimes look at different um, fields, and and the tendency is to think, oh, nothing's really changed in the last 50 years or something in this particular scientific field. But it's because scientific changes so often are incremental and not, like, big discoveries. Right, right. 
So you're saying you have to wait for every, for them to die off? The the older generation. Oh yeah, you know through. what's a good example is uh, because like Dick Cheney's on a six the pack Clovis, of heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Rockefeller's getting up there too. He's got, he's on his fourth battle card or something. Like and some of these fuckers don't seem to want to die off. Maybe they said he knocked off. So <laughs> you say that? So human migration. Um, it was practically gospel. Uh, just like. 20 years ago, mm. that humans came to America across the Bering Strait about 12,000 years ago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, 12 yeah, to 30,000 yeah. years ago. Uh-huh. And they're now finding older uh, stone tools than that. Oh, wow. And things unrelated to the group that they've, uh, that they've previously mm. identified as coming across the Bering Strait. Like and, mm-hmm. But you know you know what they are matching up with? Mm-hmm. People on the opposite side of the ocean from them. Mm-hmm. So if they made but, it to But 20 years ago, to question that humans all came across the Bering Strait into America mm-hmm. would be almost blasphemy 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as the old... Scientists are dying off. Now these new ideas are being looked at again. That that maybe they that humans sailed across the oceans before we thought they did. Well, I you know I'm even thinking like when I was in school and and, and, and dating myself a little bit, but I remember him saying like Christopher Columbus crossed the you know the Atlantic first and landed in North America before anybody else. And they're still saying that when I was a little kid, but I remember having like mm-hmm. a teacher's assistant or something when I was in like first or second grade. She's like, no, that's not true. It's actually most likely a Viking guy. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, well, why did you say that in the book? She's like, ah, oh, the book's wrong. I'm like, how is the book wrong? And she's like, it is. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And they I, conveniently leave out the millions that were slaughtered for when, when Columbus came over. Yeah, you know, you know? and... and yeah, I remember in second grade. Now it's like eighty-two or something like that. I don't know, but I was pretty captivated by the attempted assassination of Reagan. That's the era. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, but uh, that was eighty-six, right? No, that was eighty-one, eighty-two. Oh. Yeah, but um, why was I thinking it's so late? He was early in his presidency, early in his first term, but. Yeah, neither here nor there. I remember, like, somehow I was had seen something about a heart transplant, and I wrote about it in second grade. It may have been first grade. Talked about it or whatever, and I was laughed at. <laughs> so I, even my teacher was like, "No, they don't do that." And oh. and I think huh. what I must have like heard it on. Somewhere, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and thought that that was cool, and spoke about it in school, but it was still so far out that it wasn't even. It was kind of like scoffed at by my teacher, you know. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, how quickly you know the technology changes sometimes. You know, I mean, uh, my grandpa got a computer in uh, nineteen you know, ninety six or ninety seven. Micron is one of those companies you call them up and you tell them what you wanted on. They're like, oh, yeah, sure, we got it. You know, you just get this amazing computer. You know, uh, that thing, top of the line, 1996, maybe at the latest, 1998. Uh, more, you know, at that time, you know, like more space than you could ever imagine. Uh, 1.5 gigabytes. I have 16 on the phone in my pocket. <laughs> and, you know, and that was a big tower computer, you know, like a good, like yeah. two and a half feet tall. And that was like 1.5 gigabytes. My, Who could possibly use all that? My my first family computer was a 386 SX. Uh-huh. Had 156 megs of storage space. Yeah. Uh-huh. And my yeah. uncle told me that it's all you'd ever need. <laughs> 166 four, megabytes. Four megs of RAM. Nice. In one megabyte chips. <laughs> wow. Little chips that you pry off. 
<laughs> well, pl- when it was yeah, you could plug those ones back in and stuff like that. And but you can still do that. Yeah, but some of them. Now I have like sixteen gigs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there are some companies that are just really crappy, and they give you a shitty computer that you can't even upgrade. Oh, I want to take this up. Oh, yeah, if you know how to weld, you can put it back on there. And you're like, fuck. Not weld, soldering iron, but you know, like, oh, Jesus. (laughs) Welding, soldering iron, close enough. No, there's a lot of things that are modular in a computer. I just built, I just upgraded mine. Right. I think I I just was reading basically as one of the Apple products, it might be the MacBook Pro or something like that. One of them, anyway. That Macs are notoriously you soldered in there. Yeah. Ram, yeah. Why? Because we can. <laughs> but if you ever open one well, up, because maybe. if you need to upgrade, then you need to buy a new computer. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I oh, guess... Oh, you want this feature? Too bad. Apple doesn't come with it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading about Hackintoshes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that that's a that's not bird. I don't know a thing about. <laughs> but yeah. it's a. But I guess I guess this fits along the line of censorship. Wasn't there like an article I was reading about today that essentially like the Justice Department is trying to get Apple to give them like their encryption or something for their phones oh, yeah. and. You know, to my surprise, Apple was like, no, we're not doing that. I'm like, Apple? I thought they were the man now. And then, then Apple's yeah. like, oh, no, we can't do that because it would compromise See, everything. Uh, that's where I start to think maybe this is just, you know, political theater. Uh, because three years ago, they NSA announced that yeah. they have, they can get into any Apple iPhone. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I don't remember that, but I totally believe you. You know, it's the uh, yeah, the uh, NSA is pretty <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Uh, there's been edits on uh, on. I send you the link. Okay. <laughs> no, I remember that too. Yeah, basically, yeah. if they're the company. I may have posted it on your Facebook already. Mm, may have already done it <laughs> as we were speaking. Come, come to think of it, <laughs> my phone. <laughs> But, uh, Steve de- posted something. Someone deleted it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that. Uh, and your Facebook has been black. <laughs> yeah, permanently has been. You know, you've been censored. <laughs> ter- terrorista, man, you're a terrorist. Blah. Uh, yeah, there's been edits on Wikipedia, and the IP addresses all conveniently come from Langley, Virginia. Multiple different, multiple different articles. If you look where that IP address came from for the edit, you know, that's, where, that's where it came from. It's kind of weird, huh? It's odd that so many people who want to edit Wikipedia live in Langley, Virginia. You want to hear something interesting? <laughs> so I'm a part of a particular web uh, meetup on meetup.com, mm-hmm. different from this one. Mm-hmm. Um, they track all their. It, it's a computer meetup. Uh-huh. They and they track all of their where everybody's checking in from, checking the the meetup uh-huh. and the information. Uh-huh. And several of them have been from Langley, Virginia, <laughs> and uh, most of it's just around the county, right? But that's then a couple of them were Langley, Virginia, and a few were from China. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's just a little computer group. God, working at the CIA has got to be so fucking boring. Can you imagine? That's what you got to do all day. Oh, yeah, they just got to, you know, see what this group was putting on their message board. <laughs> oh, God, it's got to be the worst job ever. No wonder they're so evil. It's just terrible. They're terribly boring. All they can do is think about, well, how do I impress everybody now? I hate my life. <laughs> now, what do you think about this idea? Uh, so... You get some and- right. Mm. You encrypt messages into the androids mm. that then they will not release unless you screw them. Huh. So it's like pillow talk. <laughs> it's like pillow talk. <laughs> Is that what's for you? Maybe. 
I did not know somebody was gonna go there. But wait, 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 wait. So was Scalia killed by a robot sex assassin? <laughs> Find out next week. <laughs> Find out next week. I'm not saying it was aliens, but, but it, was, it was aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Perfect. <laughs>